Amanda, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you. <laughs> before, we, before we talk about the new show that you're going to be in, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, coronavirus, what you've been up to. It's been interesting seeing how different people live their lives, you know, or what they show you of their lives on social media. But it feels like you're very zen in this moment. Like, I don't see many anxious videos from you. It feels very meditative. It, it, it seems like you're finding... You, you're just like... You're in a transcendent space right now. Am I right? Or is this just what you're showing us online? That's simply what I'm showing you online. That's definitely not accurate at all. Um, I'm trying to share resources online that feel kind of grounding and kind of zen just because I am having a lot of anxious moments. And one of the only ways that I've been able to deal with those anxious moments is by like finding new grounding practices. I am definitely spiraling, but, but I'm trying to, to learn how to like have better, better coping mechanisms. And that's been like a really cool, exciting thing. Yeah, you've always been somebody who's been all about coping mechanisms. Um, you know, I, I know you've done videos, almost like tutorials for people talking about meditation um, and how to like calm the mind. Is that something you're doing now? Is that something you're, 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 you're trying to help people do? Like, does it get does it get you through what's happening now? Because everyone talks about meditation, but that's when life is normal. I, I really wonder if meditation works like now. In general, I think I, I just kind of feel like I have a lot of young people following me. And I think about the ways in which we use social media um, and how dependent we are on it and how, and how our realities are almost shaped more by like the virtual world that we traverse than like our tangible realities. And like, I, I think there's something to be said for like the levels of depression and anxiety that like my generation experience, like the, the levels of dissociation or just like having a difficult time coping with reality. And that could have a lot to do with just like the state of the world, like things are really, frustrating and like really you know disheartening sometimes but I feel like okay if if we are going to deal with things like this pandemic or or like feeling so disillusioned in our government like we have to come up with some sort of collecting healing tools that help us and and nourish us so that we can keep going and keep believing in something more recently I, I did this uh, video for this 24 hour live stream called A Call to Unite, uh, A Call to Unite. And um, people were contributing all kinds of stuff. And like Oprah was like Deepak Chopra and you know, all these brilliant people, Eckhart Tolle. And I was like, okay, well, if Eckhart Tolle is doing this live stream, he's gonna have like a lot more wisdom to share than I will. <laughs> and so I felt like the best way that I could apply myself was just by, um, by like providing some sort of calming or soothing moment. So I like did a violin cover of um, At Your Best, You Are Love. But, but I, I, I like how you just, you, you say that. You say there was Call to Unite. It was this huge coming together of people, just like you say, all different walks of life, trying to help people fight uh, COVID-19. And your participation, you, you, you really just throw it away, is I decided to play a violin cover because I saw the video online and for a lot of people, we saw the video and it looked like, I thought it was like a really well-performed joke. Like I was like, oh, this is cool. Like she, she's making it seem like she played the violin because it's like, you know, when did you learn how to play the violin? And like you played extremely well. Was this like a thing in your life or you just violin part-time? What, where did that come from? Uh, well, I started playing when I was like in the third grade. They offered free classes at my public school. Um, and I, I, when I was younger, I like trained very classically, like I did the whole like Suzuki method and, and all of that. And then by the time I was like maybe 12 or so, I quit. And then a couple of years later, my dad actually uh, rediscovered while digging through his closet, um, my grandfather's violin. And I, and I never got to know my grandfather very, very well. I mean, I never got to know him at all. Um, but um, yeah, it was like, this powerful moment where I felt like I could connect to him through that instrument. And so that's actually kind of what spurred me to play again. But when I started playing again, I kind of like ditched the classical um, training that I had been doing. And I like learned how to improvise and like play by ear and just play whatever the hell I felt like playing. Um, and that's the way I've been playing since then. So I'm like not the most classically trained person, but like I just try to follow my intuition and 
like do stuff like you know Aaliyah covers <laughs> so so when you're not meditating and when you're not um playing the violin and lending your voice to causes like call to unite or you know helping out with no kid hungry which you've been involved with for years even before coronavirus um you are a successful actor i mean you're out there you're making movies you're making tv shows and i believe you have a new is it, is it going to be a limited series coming out on netflix called bietti it, it's a really it's a really special show i mean it, it brings together you know some of the people who worked on la la land and it's a musical show um in and around the world of jazz and and you know it it seems like a great show especially for now i mean we're at home we need music we want we want to hang out and think about you know fun times when you can go out to places and listen to music um but tell me a little bit about the story and 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 what's exciting you about this project sure um it's about a struggling jazz club in paris um and just kind of about the family of those jazz musicians and the character that i play is is julie uh, and she's this like troubled <laughs> adolescent who uh, doesn't really have like a, an active or healthy relationship with her father but she's sent to look to Paris to live with him where he is running this jazz club um, and you kind of see the journey between these two characters as they try to understand each other and become closer and it's really difficult sometimes but um, the show in general is, is about an ensemble of characters and and just kind of all of their experiences in, in in Paris you know there's like this very kind of whitewashed like Euro, eurocentric white eurocentric uh concept of Paris and hopefully this show kind of um portrays Paris in a way which is more accurate which is like a really multicultural place that is so influenced especially by like north african communities so that's kind of the center of the show and so it's about all of these people and just like the truth of their lives yeah now that i i feel like i would have watched it regardless for two reasons one because i mean i'm stuck in the house two because i know it's going to be great but now that i know you actually know music i'm going to watch it even more because i'm like yeah this this is basically a documentary now so uh i'm going to make sure to watch it it's going to be the eddie it's coming out this friday on netflix a limited series Um Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time. Stay sane at home. Don't thanks spiral. For me. And uh thanks It's for putting cute. out the uh, cool videos. <laughs> thanks.